hey, it's been a while. Don't worry, the channel isn't dead. It's just in suspended animation, kind of like Steve Rogers or Han Solo. But don't worry, we'll be back eventually. But wow, we got a new trailer for the Breath of the Wild sequel. First of all, we are greeted with this strange looking big eared figure that we're not sure exactly what it is so far, but I got some ideas. Let's go a bit further and then we see troops of monsters marching with Calamity alongside them, taking down the Hyrulean army apparently. Now we got a better look at that mysterious figure. Of course, it's dressed a little bit like Zant if you think about it. He actually makes a connection with something that will pop up a bit further on the trailer. But what it really reminds me of is Vaati. Not exactly the eyeball covered in shadows. And I'm pretty sure I mentioned that on the previous trailer analysis that those eye symbols look like Vaati. Especially the carving on the Four Swords Sanctuary that we see in Four Swords and Four Swords Adventure. But this carving here reminds me a lot more of the person Vaati. And not even the Hylian look-alike that he turns into when using the Minish Cap. But his kind of supreme form before turning into that monster. And those really long ears remind me of the Picori that, well, Vaat was one. Much longer than Hylian ears. And of course, that's just pure speculation. It could be a new character, it could be some other character that was redesigned for the sequel of Breath of the Wild. And I, I kind of like some nice theories, but I usually find them a bit far fetched and stuff. But with all those spiral symbols around this figure, Maybe this is a Zonai, and now we see it's on a different part of the mural. It seems like he would be the one levitating from what the trailer shows us. And this one looks more like a Hylian. This thing here probably reminds me of those rituals like Ibrahim was making and Vasi was making to extract the power of the goddess or maybe the light force from within Zelda. Then we are greeted with this huge door, the Link's opening. And if you look here, it seems like there's an eye on the lock of the door, but that's just another eye among the many others that are here. And there it is, the shield again, with the eye that looks quite a lot like the one from the Four Swords Sanctuary. And going a bit forward, Link already has that dark hand of his, and he's carrying some sort of... it looks energy packs for some techno gun or something, but he doesn't seem to be carrying any sort of gun like that. So my guess here would be that those are maybe magical medicine for his arm to not control him or not fall down or not just kill him or something like that. And also along this on the background, we can clearly see one of those altar-like things in the distance. And we can see again the huge tower-like structure right ahead. And then we see some more of that time reversing mechanic that we saw on the previous trailer. And we can see what's probably an enemy that wasn't affected by this time reversal. And one thing that I really like about it is that it looks like one of those kisses from Twilight Princess. And that was one of my favorite designs so far. Those things look vicious. We can clearly see the Link's using some piece of a ruin that fell from the sky to reverse back in time and get a piggyback back on it. There's a large cave in the background, but we can't quite see what's inside or how far does it go. But one thing that seems quite clear is that this should be Faron Woods again. Which is to be expected that we would be able to visit every location of the Wolf World from the previous game. Another thing we can see in the background as he rises is a cloud of thunderstorm surrounding some structures. I would guess this would be how the game would prevent you from instantly going to some areas. You would have to unlock them on the sky and then be able to get there. So maybe you won't have that complete freedom from the previous game, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. This area here, Thor Link is able to climb, it looks more like the interior of the shrines. But it could just as well be nighttime or just some deep caves that you're exploring. And also a new kind of axe. From the makeshiftness of it, I would say it's Boko. And now maybe the most important part of the trailer, where we can get a glimpse of the whole Hyrule field. We can see Malice flowing not only from beneath Hyrule Castle, and we can see that it's probably not floating, but there is actually a pillar underneath it, like we pointed out in the first trailer, but there's also flowing Malice from Death Mountain, which I'll come back to in a moment. Then, as Link falls down, we can see a new kind of tower-like structure on top of Upland Lindor, it seems. 
the large lake over there is where Ridgeland Tower should be, and it's nowhere to be seen. So maybe with those mechanics Link will travel back to the past, but I wouldn't be confident on it, because it has been the main theme of at least 3 games in the past, plus the recent Hyrule Warriors. So I guess they'll just give some random explanation as to why those structures aren't there anymore. Then Link lands on some really weird really looking UFO, and we can see in the distance what definitely looks like those Shika technology glyphs that we saw all around the Twilight Palace. When we take a closer look, you see that it has a hand below, so it's more like a dragon carving on the rock. If you see a bit earlier, we can see another one of those drawings on the floor next to where the ancient tech lab was next to Haru Castle. Looking a bit lower, a tiny structure, which I'm gonna bet is how you travel back and forth from the sky. So Link can just upwards dive anywhere, but on specific locations. But even so, so it doesn't get too tedious to go through the same map you know over and over again. I think Link's new airship will be able to get you there and back really fast. And then, of course, we get to the title that was finally revealed, Tears of the Kingdom. Also with the new logo that the Master Sword isn't just worn like it was in the previous title. But as we know, it got broken in this game, it's getting completed with this new kind of technology. All the secrets around the title so far was because it was supposed to have a spoiler on it. Maybe they changed the title to not have said spoiler. Or maybe the tears they thought would be too much of a hint about Sheikas, maybe. But maybe there's another type of tears. As I said, I would get back to the Death Mountain. Maybe something like a link between worlds. I'm not sure. I don't think that would be besides the sky at parallel dimension. But there could be tears along the kingdom through where they are breaching malice. Like the whole underground of the kingdom is famously filled with dangerous monsters since the very first game. So there may be tears around the kingdom from where Malice is seeping through and a volcano being just a big opening to the underground. So it's a clear landmark from where we would get that. And the dragon Muffets bring back behind the logo itself as those two circling dragons. Which also reminds me of the Traveler's Shield from Breath of the Wild with the two snake-like creatures in it. And obviously, it looks like an Ouroboros, representing an infinite cycle of death and rebirth, destruction and creation, and all. And there's still another thing here. We can't quite see it behind the title, but there seems to be a Hylian and that figure we saw before. The way they are seems to be a zoom-out vision of this scene from the beginning, that didn't quite show the other side. They definitely seem to be bringing back many of the ideas they had for the previous game that didn't got used. Like the alien invasion probably brought the idea of the spaceships, Link losing his arm, and the idea they had of bringing Minish back to the series reinforces my impressions towards the figure. So yeah, maybe this guy here isn't the villain, it's just a picture that got along well with Hyans. But I would be really hyped to see Vahat finally back, because we've never seen him in a 3D game, and the trailer seems to be placing quite some importance on this carving. And I think that's it for the trailer. Don't worry, the channel will be back with more theories once we get some time. And in the meanwhile, you can watch some gameplays I've been doing on Twitch at Super Geek Bros. Or if you want the slightly edited version, you can check our second YouTube channel, Super Geek Bros Player 2. Where I'm definitely playing Tears of the Kingdom once it gets launched 8 months from now. See you later.